Now let's look at the politics of 2023 and what could be a major, major battle and uh, front line with the political parties. 18 of them are gunning to uh, get the presidential seat from the APC. The APC is the ruling party. President Buhari will not be returning to office. He would have spent uh, his uh, two terms in office. But the crucial point is that there are battleground states. And uh, there will be a, I mean, a battleground region. The Northeast is going to be one of them. And it's, it's going to be in the sense that one of the major uh, candidates is from the Northeast. And we have a vice presidential candidate of uh, the ruling party, um, former governor of Bruno State, also from that region of the country. And there are a lot of things happening. You talk about the politics of Bauchi, talk about the, the politics uh, of Katsina. We're seeing a lot of things happening in the Northwest and in the Northeast. Tonight, I'm being joined by Mr. Hamed Shwab Gara. Uh, he is the special advisor on strategy and information management to Governor Unua Yaya of Gombe State. Thank you so much, Mr. Ahmed, for, uh, for joining us tonight. It's good to see you again. Thank you, Sean. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Northeast is going to be a huge battle in that region, isn't it? Yes. And for those who think that your party is going to find a difficult time, do you think so? Uh, well, as it is, like you said during your introductory uh, position, that um, we have the former governor of Bruno State, who is the vice presidential candidate of the APC. And also we have a former governor and a former vice president of the Federal Republic, uh, the person of Atiku Abubakar, who happens to be the presidential candidate of the PDP. It's very clear. When you look at the states, Gombe, Borno, Risa, and Yobe, these are three strongholds of the APC in that regard. And when you look at the voting population and the dynamics and the historical way these three states vote, and they are going to vote definitely, I give it to APC. Not only because of the population, but for the quality of the vice presidential candidate who I'm pretty sure is going to uh, gather the necessary influence and the votes that the APC needs in that zone to, to make a, a huge, huge, huge statement. And don't forget, our governor is coordinating the presidential campaign in that zone. And your account of what he has done, on the account of his achievements, it's very easy for him to influence the other governors, especially his own brother, or rather the governor of Borno, Maimala, uh, sorry, uh, Professor Zulu, and also the performance of Maimala uh, Maimala of uh, the Senyobe State. And of course, yes, Adamawa State, we are not losing hope completely from Adamawa, but definitely something is going to come out from it. So also, Bauchi, we have a very strong candidate in Sadiq Abubakar, in the in, on account of his performance as the former chief of air staff, the, his performance or what he has done is very clear. So definitely, uh, Bauchi is going to be 50-50. Taraba, yes, of course, they have crisis right now in Taraba State, but that will not affect the performance, uh, rather the outcome of what the APC uh, is going to produce in terms of... Uh, the votes that are going to come from the in the, uh, the, in the zone. So, put it, the northeast zone, like you describe it, is a battle zone, is for APC on the account of this uh, 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 analysis and also on the account of uh, the performance of our governors and also the leadership that is we have produced uh, from that zone. You've worked with... Uh... Uh, the candidate of the NNPP, Governor Kwam Kunso. Yes, I was, I was an advisor. Uh, you were very close to the former national chairman of uh, the PDP, Bamanga Tuko. Yes. So in some way you have a, a PDP gene in you 
and you know uh, how pinned the PDP has been, you know, that twice the APC has defeated them. You think that uh, with the, the, the bloody nose that the PDP has gotten, uh, they will just let it go be, be based on your analysis and, and your knowledge of PDP also. And the structure that a lot of people will say they have in the northeast region of the country. Well, when Bamanga Chukur was chairman of the PDP, I was one of his uh, aides. And I can tell you, I have seen where five to three court cases makes a particular party to be agitated or leadership of the PDP to be agitated. As at that time, we used to have 37 to 38, oh, sorry, 37 to 40 court cases at one particular time, and we were able to kind of resolve it. But I can tell you today, PDP, just like it is in Gombe State, also at the national level, is in a self-destruct, so to say. Because if you look at the G5 governors of in the PDP who have already shown disdain to their own candidates, because PDP had injured itself technically and politically. And that is why I said, I don't think that is, from what I know, I don't think they will be able to resolve that problem before the elections as it is today. And, you, you, you were talking about the chances of the APC in the region. You talked about uh, the governors. Uh, for example, your own governor, uh, you know, I, yeah, yeah, the opposition is, has already sent out a very strong warning that the election, the next election, uh, is, is not going to be uh, a, a usual game. I mean, if there is something that he, he, he wants to take to the uh, to the election, what would that be in terms of achievement? What will it be telling the people of Gombe State? First and foremost, let me tell you, Sean, it's just because it's a convention, you have to campaign. It's a convention, you have to campaign. And people expect to see you. If not, in Gombe State, the PDP, or rather the other candidates, the opposition, made our job easier. We don't need to campaign on the account of what His Excellency has to achieve or what the account of what he has done. More or less, this is not a campaign, it's just a thank you visit to the electorate because the achievements has already campaigned for him. What are the in the last in the last three years, three and a half years, he has already prepared for his second term. And it's very clear, it's so visible to the blind and audible to the deaf what he has achieved in Gombe State. Oh, first and foremost, yeah. first and foremost, if you look at healthcare. I do not think there is any governor in Nigeria today that has renovated, upgraded, and equipped the entire 114 primary healthcare facilities in his own state. His Excellency has done that. When you look at education, he declared a state of emergency in education. And in that declaration, he tried to take it bit by bit. First and foremost is to, he has succeeded in developing the infrastructure by building more primary schools, uh, providing classrooms, so that to increase enrollment. And at the secondary level, what he tries to do also is to come with a model of the mega schools to make sure that that particular mega schools is a kind of a one-stop, one-stop education in sushi in the three geopolitical zones where if you get admitted into these mega schools you don't lack anything just like the practice that is used to happen before you don't lack anything from your feeding your instructional instructional materials quality uh, teachers and and uh, and this and, uh, and rest of it then also in education he has recruited teachers from all over the states in tertiary, educa uh, tertiary, uh, tertiary education level also, he's still trying to clear the mess of the first uh, administration because they have established a lot of schools that they couldn't even get them accredited, they couldn't provide funding, they couldn't provide the necessary approval for them to, to start. So he came in and was able to establish more tertiary institutions, 
uh, goods, more of them get uh, this accredited, and also secured a very strong partnership with the Lincoln University. If you talk about infrastructure, he has introduced the uh, the ten, uh, uh, sorry, the eleven one hundred uh, program. That means he wants to uh, provide roads, 100 kilometers road in each of the 11 local governments, which is 1,100. And he has already uh, done almost 600 uh, kilometers of that road. And by the grace of God, in the second term, he is going to uh, uh, do that. In terms of uh, providing job for the youth, he has recruited, engaged a lot of youth and provide them with job opportunities through the GOSTEC uh, uh, project. He has increased the IGR of the uh, this state, which he, he, uh, he, he met uh, from uh, 2018 <coughs> to 2022. Uh, so there are so many others. Uh, there, are, there are a few worries, though, uh, on the ground politically, because there are plans to appoint caretaker committee for the local government, which opposition has frowned against. Um, the, the PDP is already saying that he's a witch hunt by the governor. And uh, any political, uh, uh, any dissenting political voice in the state has been, uh, has been, uh, has met a very harsh treatment from the government of the day. Is that a kind of atmosphere you think people should go, I mean, with into the election? When they were there, what did they do? We cannot leave a vacuum. And because of the superior elections that are coming, we cannot conduct another local government election. So the only, op the only option is to, 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 to have a caretaker. And that is what he's going to do. And that's what we are going to do. And legally, what they are saying that is not an uh, option. That is, that, that is, there is nothing illegal about it. Because you cannot leave uh, this in a vacuum. Besides, the State House of Assembly, I get involved to approve the appointment of this. And once it is being approved by the State House of Assembly, who are representatives of the, representatives of the people, where does illegality... Uh, uh, what about the issue of violence and witch hunt? The opposition that's that is, frowned that against That is it? not in your way of doing politics. That but is not his... He has no are history, you saying has that no, the opposition... No precisely the PDP no is the one even violence. making this allegation that the governor... The PDP the, in Gombe, the they are on a the self-destruct. The, their problem is internal. If, you, if a candidate of a party who is contesting election can insult the entire leadership, the entire hierarchy, the major stakeholders in, in, in the state, call them unprintable names, including going after their parents, insulting them is being, uh, that's an audio that has been in circulation. What do you expect? Do you expect such a kind of uh, association to have peace? Do you expect such a party uh, this into, to, to have peace? They have a candidate who is not qualified who is not qualified to rule people? He does is not that, have the is, temperament. Is that, is that the reason for violence? Not, it, it does not and have, the there point? was there was no violence. The violence has been caused by themselves. The last the violence has been caused by themselves because they have internal crisis. Because, uh, they have internal problems. The reason so they that always the have, they is always, saying they always this try is to blame the, the, no, the, the, the governor or the The only police. reason this is happening is because the APC is jittery, and they say that you you don't even have a chance Sheon, at the election. Sheon, if you know Gombe, jittery about what? Gombe said, government house or government show Gombe said, it's not for kindergarten or nursery school, it's not the training school. We need quality people. And the, 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 the candidate of the PDP has no quality. He has no antecedents. Yet this is somebody who is managing a bank. He came here and accused and called the governor a thief. He came here and called the associates of the governor a thief. The same way he insulted and abused and accused his party uh, 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 members. For goodness sake, here is somebody who got a national license to run a bank. He got a national license to run a bank, not a regional license. Two years after, he abandoned the license and went to politics that he wants to go and contest uh, some politics. When he came back, he wants to come back to the bank. They have to send him away. He has to relocate to London. Let him come and tell us when he went, he went to London for two years. What did he do there? What was he doing in, 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 uh, in, in London? While the same kind of license, the likes of Jim Wobia, got at almost the same age 
when he started Zenith Bank. Look at where Zenith Bank is. So if he is not also, this is somebody uh, accusing some people of stealing. If he's not going after the treasury of the state, why can somebody leave a national license of a bank and go two years after to go after uh, go, uh, to be governor of a state? I think we will we, we'll anchor on the culminating uh, oil discovery and the commissioning that we saw, uh, which a lot of people think that, um, well, that's a, a very good opportunity for Gombe State if and Bauchi State and some other state who, that are within that two region. Uh, but you are one of those who have uh, voiced out in that respect, and now there's been a controversy. So what really went wrong? Okay. <clears throat> Let me make this very clear. The issue of Kualmani is a very simple matter. There is a boundary between Gombe State and Bochi State. Kualmani oil well, as it is, is located in Gombe State. It wasn't located in Bochi State by any major. Kolmani 1, oil well. Kolmani 2, oil well. Kolmani 3, oil well. Kolmani 4, oil well. They were all, and Kolmani <coughs> 5, sorry, Kolmani 5, they were all located in Gombe State. Somewhere due to interest, by certain people that found themselves in the position of authority in NMPC. They distorted the facts and said that the most lucrative well, which is the Colmani one that the Mr. President went to commission, they say it's in Bochi State. When the location of Colmani, in fact, that very place is not even Colmani. Colmani is just the river. The very farmland or the very location, the village where the Colmani oil that was commissioned by Mr. President is, is called Kaltanga Mamuda. All the four oil wells are in Kombe. From that place to Bochi, the border of Bochi State is about 2.3 kilometers or thereabout. And that's why we said the National Boundary Commission should come out clean mm. and tell no. us where that one is, is. The Thai district where Kaltanga Mamuda village is or location is, is in Pindiga Emirate. It's in our local government. It's also in Gombe State. And we even say that INEC themselves, they have polling units. Those polling units that are in that area, they should come and say, are they in Bochi State or they in right. Gombe State? So the, 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 the locals that are there, we are trying to manage them as it is now. Right. Just a few days ago, His Excellency made it clear that the Gombe State government are going to pursue the development of the Colmani oil well. Right. All the farmlands that they, they, took, not, they, yeah. they took there, they took them from them in the name of creating access road. Uh, I'm very day. sure that we'll see you again after the election. So we'll be able to review the outcome of the election. But I must sincerely thank you for coming tonight, Mr. Ahmed Shoaib Gara. He's the special advisor on strategy and information management to Governor Unwa Yaya of Gombe State. Thank you so much indeed for coming thank tonight. Thank you. It's my pleasure. We appreciate it.